In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Furious FPV True Delight. Now, this is considered somewhat of a budget range Fat Shark module. However, I'm considering it as the mid range uh, due to its price. And what we're going to cover today is quite a lot. So, there will be timestamps down below, and it is also shown in the video progress bar. So, you can skip to whatever part of the video you would like. Now, some of the things we are going to be covering are the overall menu. We're also going to take this apart and take a look at the hardware and also a comparison between the rapid fire as well as the sky zones oleds and my impressions and if i trusted it while i was flying in my area so with that being said let's go ahead and get started So let's take a look at some of the things they provide you in the packaging. You get a very brief manual, which basically explains just about every function. There isn't that many functions on this. And again, we're going to take a look at those later on. You also do get the module itself and one extra plastic piece. Now, these plastic pieces hold the module into this thing right here. But as you can tell, I've actually removed it. And the reason why I removed it is because in my HDO, uh, this wouldn't allow it to sit all the way inside. So it just wouldn't power up. So how do you end up using it like this? Now, it, that might not be the case for everybody, but for me, I had to do that in order to get it working. So yeah, just take that into consideration. If it's not booting, uh, just remove it. And if you need to remove it, all you have to do is just, just basically pull these out like that you'll be able to pop out these little plastic pieces, but putting them back in is a bit of a nightmare. You also do get these protective covers out of the box when they do arrive, and the warranty sticker is stuck on my finger. So in this part of the video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of its features and also the menu, so you get a better idea of what you're actually getting here. Now, let's go ahead and start with the main menu. So to access the main menu, we need to press this middle button right here, and we see we have save channels, which we can edit and modify by going to the add button. And we can also save the channels while we're actually on it. So we don't have to just go here to save the channels here. So let's get exit back out. Also, if you wanted to modify any of these save channels, you just click and hold on it and you could change it, delete it, or just exit. Now exit doesn't get you out of this menu. The way to get out is you need to hold the bottom button right here, or the down button. Next, we have all channels mode, so you can just go into all channels. So now in smart search, it's re I really love their smart search. So once you click it, it scans all the channels and it gives you everything you got a reception for. And you could click through them with the up and down and then select whatever one you wanted. And it does give you the RSSI for each, so it's really nice. It, it takes that from their more expensive modules. So I like that they've kept that there. Also, you get a band scanner if you wanted to scan the bands. So you can do that as well. Settings, let's go ahead and cover settings real quick. You could put an alarm for low RSSI. Auto lock, which means, you know, if you accidentally touch it while you're flying, it won't change the channel. Filter, I really don't understand what that really does, but I flew everything on normal. Uh, this is the call sign and calibrate. It's very important to calibrate and it's very simple to do that. And it'll tell you once you press calibrate. Quad finder. So whatever channel you're on, you'll start running the quad finder on. And, you know, you just start pointing it and hopefully you'll have some sort of a uh, directional antenna, which would really help you in finding it. And it'll just start beeping. And that's why it has also the buzzer inside and it'll give you the RSSI and everything. So that's really nice to have here. So now we're in all channels. And as you can tell, you'll know that by the all down here. And you can go ahead and start switching through all the channels right here. I really love the format of the switching the channels here. So it's, it's really nice and intuitive, really. So you could quickly go through whatever channel you want. However, let's just say you wanted to hop into your save channels. The way you would do that is you hold that down button right there. And now you're in your save channel. So if we start scrolling, we'll scroll through the save channels that we've already saved or, you know, pre-set up in here. Now these come default R1, 2, 3 and four here so you can set those up now also a really nice feature here what i really like is instead of going to the menu to find that smart search you can just hold the up button right here and it all automatically enters smart search so that's really really nice to have here however with this little package you don't get on-screen display inside your goggles like the rapid fire does that gives you the rssi and what channel you're on so that's something you're not going to get here and as in more options this is it. it's just pretty basic here now another little nice thing that you can do is actually there's a usb on the bottom so you can update this and um yeah that, that's really it for every single uh setting and menu in here so let's go ahead and jump into the next part so in this part of the video we're going to take it apart and take a look at some of the components or the hardware that's on this right here so we do have a screw right there so let me just go ahead and quickly remove that so as you can tell we do have two receivers here this is one receiver and this is the second receiver and if we pop this open you got to be very careful because there's these pins holding it into place right in the middle so you just got to be very, very careful. You don't want to bend any of these if for some reason you wanted to go ahead and remove it. 
All right, so let's go ahead and start with the bottom board here. So the bottom board is gonna be the thing that's in charge of sending all the information or the video feed down to your goggles with possibly the SPI connections to allow you to change channels through your goggles. If we take even a closer look here, we see we're, they're lined with these nice little plastic pieces, which I really like because it keeps the overall module very rigid and it doesn't flex as much as some other modules in the market. So it's really nice they've added that touch. We can see our little buzzer right here. And um, here's our connector, which will allow the uh, logic to pass through both of these boards, some capacitors right there, and we have our receiver right here. So that's one receiver, which is connected to this antenna. Now, if we take a look at the other board here, this is where most of the things are happening right now. We do have one receiver, we have our LCD, we also have our buttons right here. And if we flip this board over right here, what we can see is we see our pin headers are gonna connect to the bottom board, our USB connection, and we have, uh, what is this, the, the Scilab CP2102, which is basically a UART to USB uh, serial converter, as I believe that's what this is doing right here, so it's right next to it. Here, I think this is the switching regulator, and this is the Atmel, I think this one was the Atmel. Yeah, and this is like the Atmel, uh, this is the microcontroller unit, I believe. Usually, some of these actually end up using some F1 processors, or some even use F3 processors, but this one's using like the Arduino Atmel, I think this is the 8-bit processor here and if we take a closer look here we see that we do have a resonator so i'm guessing this is the microcontroller unit and it's an app mail so it's not an f1 or an f0 like we we're used to with the stm 32s and maybe that's why they were able to keep it at such a low price so now something else to take into consideration basically your diversity module here this one is only done through the software of this little guy right here so in theory it's basically a pretty basic setup you know i just compares the rssi and it just flips them and it, to be honest it shows in the performance out in the bando that i usually fly in which we're going to cover in the next part of the video so let's go ahead and jump to that all right guys so here's our first test with the furious fpv uh module the d light module uh but what i aim to do here is i set up the video transmitter on 25 milliwatts same antennas as the sky zone and also the rapid fire and what I try to do in the same VTX, obviously, I try to make it all the way down there and go through the roof. And that's usually my base test to start building trust with a module, antenna, or whatever it might be. And the problem is here with the Fat Shark right now, um, it's skipping a lot of frames when it's breaking up, so you're not seeing all the breakups. So it's looking better than it actually is, but you can see it skipping. And especially when it gets really bad over there and I make my way back, all of a sudden you'll see me just on the other side like just look at that i'm all the way halfway back now because it skipped all the breakup it was getting so sketchy that i couldn't make it through the roof there we do make another attempt and let's go ahead and jump to that right now so here's the second attempt right now i'm trying to fly a little bit lower because i'm going to see if i could push it even more and you can see it skipping through and through and you know that's it i, I just couldn't i needed to go back because it's just, the quadcopter is just going to fall and i just couldn't see you know the breakup was really really bad and again uh when we looked at the hardware we also saw that it's, it's very basic you know it's just basically doing the rssi stuff you know this rssi is bigger and the switching doesn't seem to be as good as something like the rapid fire but again the rapid fire is three times as much uh more expensive here so let's go ahead and jump to the rapid fire on the same exact day and see how that went all right now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the rapid fire now if you could immediately tell that the rapid fire always makes the image quality looks like shit or at least just darker and i think that's due to the osd or something that's going on in the background here but it is darker and you do get less of a a, a better picture quality so let's go ahead and take a look at the rapid fire itself here now i'm making my way downtown and uh, as you can tell everything is good you do have these breakups but it wasn't this bad in the video feed i didn't have it uh, flicker this bad as it as it's doing in the DVR. I still had a lot of confidence. Black and white, still good. The breakup is just gorgeous, as you can tell. I'm making my way through, making my way through. I'm totally fine. I can make it through the roof, and I think we do another attempt where we try to make it through the roof. So this is just kind of testing the waters right now. So here's the second attempt. It split the video in two files, and I'm not going to be able to skip it because of the way I'm actually playing it. But this is the, the most important part here. So this is the second attempt on the rapid fire. You can tell it's a rapid fire from the on-screen display up on the left here. Making my way through, and I've made it through the roof. And now just a quick punch out because I have these trees blocking me, and I'm basically standing right over there, right here, facing that way. And... Um, yeah, it's, you know, there, there, there's a huge difference here, but the module is still decent, but it's it's not as good as, this, you know, the default ones in the Sky Zone, but I mean, it has some nice features, and um, personally, I wouldn't use it, 
Uh, but if that's the only cash I had, then I guess I, I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, you can see the difference between the, the, the you know, the rapid fire is, is way better. But obviously, again, it's three times more expensive. But also the Furious FPV X, when I tested it, it was kind of the same, uh, you know, the same scenario here. I couldn't really give it the full trust like I would with a rapid fire and even the sky zone. The sky zones always just cease to impress me always. They just handle so great. And um, yeah, so I just continue flying on with the rapid fire here. I don't know why the flicker is going on here. Maybe I needed to update something on the fat shark, but it wasn't this bad. And it wasn't this, it wasn't doing this in my goggles. And also I'll have links down below to all the other modules that might be cheaper that depending on your budget, you can go ahead and pick up. They're all pretty great modules. They're all perform almost identical. Obviously the more expensive ones tend to outperform the cheaper ones like the rapid fire. And the rapid fire is definitely worth its price, even though it's much, much more expensive. But it's the one I would just stick on my fat shark. I wouldn't stick anything else as of right now of the things I've tested. And uh, everything's linked down below, guys. So you can check those out. It's a great support channel. Come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways. I'll also be giving away uh, this one this month. You know, new Patreons also have their own separate giveaways. So there is a lot of opportunity to win something. And I do like around 10 giveaways a month, sometimes more. So your probabilities of winning are high and you'll support the channel and you get access to a lot of crazy cool things, not just the giveaways. So go ahead and check everything down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.